Hello and welcome to this quick review of redox titrations. Uh, what we'll do is take you through what a redox titration is and how to set one up. And uh, we'll do a couple of worked examples of typical A-level redox titration style questions. So first of all, let's think about what a redox titration actually is. Well, as the name suggests, it's a titration procedure and it's based on redox reaction as opposed to the more common acid-base titration whereby people have used um, acid and base reactions or acid and base neutralizations to um, work out concentrations, etc. So in terms of the, uh, the practical equipment, it's identical to a normal titration, like we've just mentioned, except what goes in the burette and what goes in the titration flask are slightly different. So as per a normal titration, the burette will contain a standard solution of known concentration, So the conical flask will contain a sample of known chemical identity, so you'll know what it is, but you won't know the concentration of it. But the important thing is that the standard solution and the unknown will react together in a specific mole ratio in a redox reaction. So quite often the standard solution will be an oxidising agent of known concentration, could be uh, manganate uh, 7, for example, or dichromate 6, but not necessarily exclusively these two. Others could be used as well. So the unknown could be a range of substances, but it depends on the reaction being investigated. So in many cases, the unknown is a solid, uh, or it comes as a solid and has to be dissolved to make a solution that can then be titrated. So it could be a salt, for example, which undergoes a redox reaction with the oxidising agent in the standard solution. So it's uh, not an exhaustive list of standard solutions and possible unknowns that you could titrate them against, but these are common ones that pop up in A-level um, papers. So you're quite likely to come across any of them in a question that you are doing in your, in your paper at the end of the year. So what you need to be able to do as well is memorise the redox equations that go with these combinations. So these are the balanced redox equations for how those standard solutions would react with those unknowns in, the, in that table. So depending on how confident you're feeling about uh, redox equations, you might wish to stop the video at this point and copy these down, break them up into their two half equations and before putting them back together again, this will help you aid, the, aid your understanding of what's actually going on as opposed to just memorising them without particularly knowing what's going on or what's happening. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about now is the actual practical procedure or the set of steps you'd have to take to do your redox titration. So, assuming that we're starting with a solid, um, you weigh out your solid, a known mass of it, on a top hand balance using a weighing boat. The next thing to do is to add your solid to a beaker. You rinse the weighing boat with distilled water to make sure that all the solid is transferred and make it up to around 100 centimetres cubed using distilled water. So you add your solution to a volumetric flask, usually around 250 centimetres cubed, rinsing your beaker and the funnel used with distilled water all the while to make sure that there's uh, no loss of material for making it to the mark accurately using distilled water, you can use your eye at the level of the meniscus, uh, like the diagram shows, to uh, check your accuracy. So you make sure you transfer from the volumetric flask to the conical flask using a volumetric pipette, so you can ensure that your 25 centimetres cubed is accurate. As always, you make sure that your glassware that you're doing the transferring with is rinsed with distilled water as you go. So finally you can perform your titrations until you achieve concordancy, which means an agreement between titers of 0 0.10 centimetres cubed. So now let's look at what would happen, uh, how would you actually use the data we've just um, obtained. So let's assume that we titrated dichromate 6 against iron 2 plus, and that's your um, redox equation from earlier. So 
Now we're going to use a technique called data moles equation moles answer to help us make the calculation a little bit easier to cope with. Now assuming we had a concentration of our dichromate of 0 0.02 moles per decimeter to the minus 3, and remembering of course that dichromate only acts as an oxidizing agent when it's acidified, we can now take our average titer and uh, make that uh, part of our data. So coming back to the original um, average titer, it was 24.50 uh, centimeters cubed. So that's the volume of 0 0.02 moles per decimeter to the minus 3 of dichromate that actually reacted. So we can use an equation from first year chemistry, n equals v times c, to work out from that particular volume of 0 0.02 mole per decimeter to the minus 3 of dichromate that we actually have 4.9 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of dichromate. Now looking at the equation you can see that there's a mole ratio of 1 to 6 between dichromate and iron 2 plus. So that means to get the moles of iron 2 plus all we need to do is multiply 4.9 times 10 to the minus 4 times 6. So putting that into a calculator we end up with uh, the number of moles of iron 2 plus um, which reacted which is 2.94 times 10 to the minus 3. So what you've got to remember is that this is the number of moles of iron 2 plus that is contained in one sample of 25 centimetres cubed which we've just titrated. The original sample was dissolved in 250 centimetres cubed of water. So to get the amount of Fe2 plus in moles that was present in the original um, sample, we need to multiply up 2.94 times 10 to the minus 3 by 10, because 25 centimetres cubed goes into 250 centimetres cubed 10 times. So if we do that, that will mean we have the original sample containing 10 times this amount, which equates to uh, 2.94 times 10 to the minus 2. So what we can do with this is uh, go on to do further calculations depending on why we did the redox titration in the first place. So the redox titration tells us how many moles of pure iron 2 plus were in the original sample. So we might have been calculating percentage purity, for example, or we might be trying to work out the number of moles of water of crystallization in a hydrated salt. Whatever the actual um, follow-on we were going to do, uh, you can see some worked examples in my longer clip called redox titrations, as opposed to just redox titrations quick review. So in the meantime, thanks for listening, and until next time, see you soon.